Hey everyone, this is Miss Moriarty and I'm here to discuss with us topic 4.2, which is all about soil formation and erosion. Now, before we can get into the formation of soil, the of, um, things that affect the formation of soil, we kind of need to understand, well, what is soil, right? It's not just dirt. Uh, it's a whole mix of a couple different things. So one, we know it can be a mix of rocks as well as any other organic material. Um, we know that it's a mixture of what's called sand, silt, or clay. We'll talk a little bit more about what those are later on. Um, it's a mix of humus, which is that organic part of soil. That can be anything from broken down biomass like leaves, dead animals, or waste. We know it also has nutrients such as ammonium, phosphates, or nitrates. We can find water as well as a mixture of carbon dioxide and oxygen from the air found mixed within the soil and living organisms. Now, how does soil form? Well, there's two factors that play a role, and that is going to be weathering and erosion. Now, we've kind of talked about soil formation before back in unit one when we discussed e ecological succession specifically primary succession in where you tend to have bare rock in the ecosystem and over time that bare rock is actually broken down and changed into then layers of soil usually via a pioneer species such as mosses or lichens now there are other ways that uh, rock can weather um, and it can weather in three different ways one being physical so wind rain uh, the freezing or thawing of ice can actually crack it, make fractures. We can see biological weathering, which is usually the roots of trees cracking the rocks, or chemical changes in the rocks that help break them down. So that could be acid rain or the acids produced from mosses and lichens. That weathering of rock then creates our soil over time. That soil can then be carried away and deposited by erosion, which is going to be our transport of that weathered rock by wind or rain and carried to then a new location. So let's look at soil formation from above and from below. So starting from below, this would be looking at like the bare rock. We know that that's going to get weathered and we tend to call that bare rock the parent material because that's what we're going to be starting with. Over time, it's going to produce smaller and smaller fragments that are going to help to make up the inorganic part of our soil. So that's going to be the composition of sand, silt, clay, and maybe some minerals. When we look at it from above, we tend to see a breakdown of organic matter. Um, it's going to add humus to the soil, and erosion may deposit soil particles from then other areas. Now, factors that play a role in soil formation can be the type of parent material can actually influence the soil's pH and its nutrient content. The topography of the land, especially if it has a steep slope, can actually increase the amount of erosion versus a area that is much more level grounded. We can see a lot more deposition or formation of soil. Climate, right? A much warmer climate uh, increases decomposition rates, so we tend to see a faster breakdown of organic matter. More precipitation equals more weathering, more erosion. And organisms, right? The more bacteria, fungi, or worms that you might have present, the better the breakdown of the organic matter. And so here in the image, all the way to the left, we see much fewer nutrients because we have very immature soil. We still have the parent rock. It's not very weathered at the time. But as wind and rain and other factors play a role, those fragments break down and they move upward. We tend to see now organic material can accumulate. Those plants and other organisms are going to die. That continues to then accumulate to over time create mature soil where we see lots of vegetation and roots and we see then the parent material or bare rock towards the very bottom. Now, once we get mature soil, that mature soil can turn into layers, and those layers we call horizons. It's really important to know this diagram and know the characteristics of each. So starting with the first layer, this is our O horizon. Here is the organic matter. We see plant roots, 
dead leaves, maybe animal waste. Um, this is the layer that's going to provide lots of nutrients, maybe even limit water loss to evaporation. Below that is our topsoil. That's going to be the A horizon. This is where the humus accumulates. This is where decomposition of organic matter takes place. We see lots of biological activity happening here with earthworms and bacteria. Below that is the B horizon where we see subsoil. This is the lighter layer below the topsoil made of minerals and not very much organic matter is found here. Um, here we have the C horizon. This is going to be the least weathered part of the soil, m closest to the parent material, may even be called the bedrock. Now it's important to note that in some biomes we can see soil horizons actually have an additional layer, um, and this is called the E horizon, and this can occur either beneath the O or the A. We call it the E horizon because it's called the alluviation layer. And in alluviation, we tend to see lots of leaching of nutrients like um, sodium, potassium, uh, nitrogen, and so on. Now, guys, this is the last slide uh, for these notes today. I know there's a little bit more left of 4.2, but we will continue to talk about that in class. So at this point, make sure that you have the notes that are mentioned in this video and you can mark this as done.